Hello everybody and welcome back. We are at Keltec, PDS Keltec, with the one and only Kelly Harris. We are still sweating as a consequence of being <laughs> up and we've got to turn the aircon off for the audio so it is now it's still 32 degrees. Yeah, yeah, it's hovering around 32. So that's fun. Who, who said we need to go abroad for a holiday this year? <laughs> so there's no point, just come to <laughs> Kelly's top floor. Costa del Quint. It's always... <laughs> ah, that works. <laughs> the topic of our second sort of bumbling conversation, which is what we tend to do quite well, yeah. uh, if you're into bumbling conversation, is about the industry. And what I wanted to know is the benefit Kelly has, or one of the many benefits Kelly has, is perspective. Because he started back in the early days, in 2008-ish, we discussed in the previous video. Um, and now we're in 2020, so that is a good sort of 12-year cycle. Um, and I want to know whether you think the standard of detailing has improved over those last 12 years. So, tricky question, because I see more than one answer, so I'll try and explain why. Um, I'm going to go with, yes, it's improved massively to start with, mm -hmm. and I'm going to take myself as a company and what we've learned and how self-taught and experiment with new products, new techniques. We talked earlier, I think, about the microfiber pad, and yes. so there. If I didn't, if that if, uh, product manufacturers didn't bring these new products to market, there'd be no variety mm -hmm. that we wouldn't test. When I first used them, didn't get on with them. Then practice and practice, and then realised actually made an improvement. So the industry has got huge. I'm going to say huge companies and brands behind them compared to 15 years ago. Yes, it would be a guy on his own almost, in a shed, just brewing up something where certain brands have come from, their origins. And it hasn't changed much. I reckon the products on the market in 1995 and, say, 2005, apart from packaging, True. not much yeah. happened. So the, the, the latest thing with machine technology, going from corded to battery, mm -hmm. from at one size orbit, that's all you had for probably 30 years. Mm -hmm. In America, the porter cable to many different size orbits and gear-driven, non-gear-driven, direct-drive, some call it force-driven, all these different machines, and then like, see behind, you've got loads and loads of pads. So when I was polishing, for actually longer than I've actually been as a in known detailer, so 13 mm -hmm. years this has been KDS, I've actually had a lot longer process in the past, about 20 years worth of doing it as a body shop. As a, and we only had two pads, two compounds, and most of the painters would only use one compound, one pad. Mm -hmm. You got what you got. But there wasn't actually any variety. And was that with rotary, I'd imagine? Rotary only, yeah. yes, correct. So it'd be rotary only, and it would, it would be either, well, it'd normally be 3M products. Yeah, it's just, cut plus. yeah, that's yeah. exactly it. It's, that was the like, potatoes of the diet. <laughs> it was every single. It was, a, it was good filler. Yeah, it was the one you used at every single visit, really. Yeah. So that was a, that's all you used. And I remember being held, handed hand glazed and machine glazed by painters, and I'm like, well, why do I need that? because this is done. Bear in mind, we had the wrong lighting, we didn't know about all the different chemicals out there. So, if you've been in this industry a long time, I think every person that's been in this industry a long time, that has had a business brand a long time, has now upped their game massively. <laughs> Absolutely. Everyone I've spoken to, everyone I've met in this industry over the years, they're all striving for the next thing. And it's not the next thing to make it quicker and easier, and it's actually to be better. Yeah. So it's a better end result for the end user, the consumer, the person paying. I think part of that might be, in, well, in my opinion at least, is that it is easier to get that first, say, 60 or 80%. Yes. With, I mean, if you use, say, a, a, a Rupes 50 mil through an LHR um, uh, 15, it's, I mean, when I was using it, compared to using a rotary, it is so much easier. Yes. Yeah. Less skill it involved. Is. It's like using yeah. a gun as opposed to being a, a, a good and sword. And that's a debate on its own that I've even had conversations where I've randomly, um, it was two years ago in SEMA, in a bar, the details meet, that someone poked me and went, I knew who he was, but it's the first time I ever met face to face. And let's say he might have had a few drinks in him maybe, but he just <laughs> went, poked me and went, Question, simple question, Rotary or DA, which is best? And I said, there is no such thing as best. And he went, you have to choose one. So I said, in my head, I'm trying to think for ease of use, usability, quick to teach with, DA. Yeah. Because I've been there and done it. I, it's the, and he, he turned around and said, I'm not a good detail because I chose detail. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that's a strange thing because what works for one doesn't work for another. But so, 
that I think the industry has got a lot better for the consumer because you we do see cars that have had two three years worth of protection and are still working brilliantly. Mm -hmm. So the end user gets a much better result that lasts years, not weeks. Yeah. But because of the products, and I've got certain products in my mind that have made my job technically take longer, and you have to be more scientific mm -hmm. to give a long-lasting result, which actually could look like a burden if you didn't have yeah. the right facilities and the mindset to take a long time for things to cure and build the facility you need. But then you've also got the products that make things look just as good, very short-term, with just, I'm going to call it makeup. Like, yeah. like, for your face and it washes off very quickly. We've discussed it can last two, three, four weeks. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy for a new person to look like they're achieving exactly the same results with how good technology is of a mobile phone and how good the photo looks. I think that's a great analogy you're saying is nowadays with the, the, the sensor tech, the APS-C sensor tech you get in mobile phones. It's crazy. It is absolutely stunning. And I'd use another analogy, which is race drivers. If you talk to an old race driver in the 50s, True. any of them still surviving, is that that was real driving. There was no ABS, there was no traction control. Yeah. The cars were inherently fairly unstable. And so those guys, the skills they possess, not saying that the current crop aren't high end, but I can drive a modern car round a track pretty quickly with all the driver aids on, take those aids off, and I'm, I'm going to be killing people. Well, it's funny, there's two things here, and you, we've never discussed the second one I'm going to get to, never discussed. So the person that poked me and said, Rotary DA, I get what he was saying. Was he wearing a bandana? No, no, he wasn't. <laughs> and he was... I get he's trying to say that if you... Yes, things I can do with a rotary, a lot of people would actually damage car paint. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make me a better detailer. And it doesn't mean I teach all of my staff to do that because there's products and processes and machinery out there now that eliminate the... to have to know that. And as we just did discuss earlier, probably 1% of the cars that come in this building mm -hmm. would need my specialist expertise that makes me a master as he was trying to argue with me and I've gone I can still achieve all this work amazingly which is the DA now yeah that's the thing but that's because we also talked about the clients of the cars we get in here are very new very good condition mm -hmm. so it's a I have to sometimes think hang on a minute I'm not now dealing with really old wrecked cars or faded oxidized paint so the other analogy you just said that car is really fun, funny I've got a really perfect one here when I teach ceramic, and this is about products again, so we'll have a really boutique wax, mm -hmm. then we'll have a, a, a sealant, but a paste sealant, and then we'll have a ceramic blend, hybrid wax, yes, yeah. a bit of both. Then we'll have a spray on sealant, and then we've got ceramic, nano. Yeah. I line them up and I'll go, this wax is like your Renault Clio or say a family car. It's got really low power. Anyone can drive it. You're hardly going to have an accident. Mm -hmm. And literally, as you step up, I would say, right, this next car is a bit like a, a GTI Golf. Then that one's a Nissan GTR. It, it's still going to go fast, but everyone can achieve a very fast lap time. Then you step up and you're into your sort of what single-seater car, and then you've got your Formula One. So the ceramic coating, you're basically you're comparing Formula to... One. to okay, you, Formula yeah, One. Yeah, Formula One. Tech, not in technology, but I'm saying if someone got into a Formula One car and tried to make a lap, they're going to probably crash. Yes, if you're not used to downforce, then yeah. you will So crash, I'm, yeah. I'm going to, if I just went, here's this nano coating, ceramic coating, and it's the, the ultimate, I'm almost certain, absolutely, it doesn't matter what they've watched on YouTube, they will, when I say crash and burn, there'll be a patch somewhere, somewhere or something missed, or, and it won't come off. Um, so, quick aside, if, if you've got Formula One and ceramic coating, a kind of SiO2, does that make graphene an impressive WRX STI then? So it's one better than Formula One. It, it starts, now that, that gets, it's not a tricky question. I've got my own <laughs> opinions of how far do we need to go yeah. before it becomes showmanship. Let's call yeah. it that, marketing. Technology for technology's sake. It's yeah. not three, four, five years of what we've got now. And there's lots of people that say, I don't think it does last that long. I've seen customers' cars that will last that long. When it's applied correctly, it comes back to if you've driven wrong at the beginning and you haven't got everything right, you actually haven't laid down the coatings correctly with three layers with curing times. Once you've obeyed those rules, I can't see how I've had customers' cars three, four years later and they come in and it's in a Jaguar's day, one mm. year ago. It's perfect still. Do we need to get any better? Do we need a car coating that lasts 
15 years. Well, it's not great from, from, a, from a detailer point of view. It's not. Return customer. No. For half grand in 15 years. Which mm. then comes back to the products about the waxes, where the waxes have a completely different feel about them. And they make it very easy for new detailers mm -hmm. to use the glazes and the waxes. And, and we spoke about a product earlier, you just spray on and wipe, and it, it makes it, we, it can hide sanding marks. You know, I've yeah. literally done demonstrations. So it's complete makeup. That's polyfiller. Yeah, it, yeah. it literally is. You spray on, and as I said to you, I think we do one car a year where we wax it. It's almost an argument between us who gets it. And we ne we've forgotten how easy it is. Is that wrong? No, because the wax should be marketed towards the hobbyist guy, the weekend that wants to do the car themselves. Now the problem becomes, that person that's done that a couple of times in his car, wherever he's bought them online, Halfords, yeah. wherever he's bought the products from, there's so many good products now. Yes. It used to be a stage of one or two were good. Now I think it's almost one or two are not very good. Yeah. That it's too easy to think when they've done that the weekend outdoors that they're achieving the same results as people like me and yes. other detailers at a, a complete different level because they look very similar on the day of and they, application. Yeah, yeah, and they think they can also immediately go. They, they think, and oh, it could be your business straight exactly. away. And they then then turn professional, or or worse still, is that they get the products that you're using, not that you, yeah. there's some obviously restricted supply, and then they just presume that it's as easy and straightforward yes. as, as applying the wax, and then it goes terribly wrong. And as we discussed, there's a lot more to doing this as a business than just putting the products on. It's it's yeah. it's dealing with customers. It's their expectations. It's it's, it's a bigger picture, isn't it? And it, yeah, this boils back to the thing that we we regularly come across is that. Technically, the very best detailers, the best craftsmen, the, both, the most artisanal, if you like, don't usually, don't often, should we say, no. make successful business people. No. And equally, the ones with the most business, and we've been talking off yeah. camera about you know, yeah. various famous names and stuff like that, they're very good at business and very good at marketing. Yes. And that's great, and they've made money. Um, and, and my training has changed over the eight years of one-to-one, -one, where I was guilty of it myself. I was yeah. very artisan craft only. All I showed them was where we're getting up really close, I would get my microscope out. I mean, mm -hmm. I actually look at that. And That's think, not a euphemism. I'm like, why am I getting a microscope they out? They ask that too. Yeah, but why am I getting a microscope out to look at the sanding defects and show the cross pattern or the hazy? And I was one of those people when I'm like, one day as I woke up and looked at myself now thinking, not one customer has ever asked me for the footage yeah. of Sandy marks. So yes, it was a training aid for me in the early days to learn my craft, and then I used to introduce it into my training, but it's not really relevant now because I was learning what's right and wrong. Now I know what's right and wrong, or what the best methods are. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, why should I bog a pupil down with that geekiness? Yeah, yeah, when actually it might be worth spending half a day explaining how to deal with customers and their expectations and the types of customers and the types of cars, and actually some customers might not want the best, we had a discussion about you might come back once a month for the wax top yeah. up and it's about psychology reading body language and so there i've not i've learned a little bit more in the last 12 years about this trade but obviously i was doing it for 20 25 years before really and i've been around it all my life what i've learned is business yeah so i now introduce a lot more about the business side how to conduct yourself how to you represent yourself to wear clothes well, yeah, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not that good. <laughs> not now. <laughs> um, so it's, uh, and it's very accessible, very easy, just to put, a, start an Instagram, yeah, handle. You want to call it handle, you know, Facebook, and, right. yeah. and you're a detailer. That's and it's that accessibility. And there's nothing wrong with that. No. And I've, because I started off exactly the same in that. When do you become professional? I think it's a horrible word because yeah. I think it's overused when they, people slay each other and say you're not a pro because you're not full time. Well, I was doing this for a long time part time before I then ventured into doing it full time. Yeah. And I treat all my pupils the same as what I was like that there is no transition. You have just taken the financial risk to go full time. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean I was any better. I, I, I couldn't agree more. We get a lot. We get a lot of that flack and, and people saying that oh, if he's not full time, can't possibly be as good a detailer. We did a whole video in fact about right. it. And the answer is, it makes no difference whatsoever. It's to do with your overall experience. Yeah. And technically, professional just means you take money for it. So if you're a seven-year-old kid and you paid fifty p for, for cleaning your nan's micro, you're a professional. You're technically <laughs> professional. Yeah. Really, the quick get insurance. Though. Um, yeah. So you know that's that's a, a little technicality. But what I want to talk about is 
where do you think the industry is going? Where do you think the future is? At the moment, we're in a situation where it's slightly uncontrolled. It's definitely, it's grown massively in popularity. And in the old days, car, car washing, which is a very simplistic way. I was way called it. a car washer. Yeah. It's, it's 400 pound car washer. Yeah. So it was, yeah. And it comes about because if you, and, and I've seen this a lot, is if, for example, during the recession, the 08, 09 recession. Which is when I started, remember? Yeah. Exactly when I started. And you get a lot of people, <laughs> and they've got a skilled or semi-skilled job that they've lost for yes. whatever reason, because yeah. interest has gone down. And you think to yourself, what job can I do? And it is one of the most accessible trades, because yes. all you need is a couple of buckets, a couple of wash mitts, an old van, and you can, you can be up and running. Yes. And it's that uncontrolled element that makes it um, kind of, difficult from the point of view of, of regulation or providing people with a with a path, a career path, so that you can ensure that they learn in a nice sort of metered way and they run a business and it, it that's that's the challenge is how do you create that structure so that there's a recognised way of people come to trade. If you want to be a plumber, you go to exactly. plumbing school yes, or exactly. technical college I guess and you become a plumber and you've actually got respect for it. With us now detailers got more respect, but we're not known as a I fashion. I find it we talked to another video about a million pound center I worked on. Mm. And I find it absolutely amazing that it's pretty much every, every person's highest value purchase, the second highest is going to be a car. Mm -hmm. Some people, their car collection is actually more than their house. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're, it's very, there's the risks are huge for someone working on a customer's car it's probably not going to cause death like plumbing with corgi and gas. Yeah. So obviously there's, there's the low risk, but it's still a huge responsibility. And I don't know of any other organisation or la no organisation, any other trade where you can be working on something of such high value and such rarity. Entirely unregulated. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, but also I did. And yes. I, and I still essentially do. I've regulated myself. But it's like insurance, is it? Yeah. A perfect example. Technically, there's a public liability insurance, particularly if you're working mobile, by law, there's an element to that. But in other respects, unless you're employing somebody, you've got employers, yeah. employees yeah. insurance and stuff like that, there's no requirement no. for you to have accidental damage cover. And the risk with that is mm -hmm. that if something goes wrong and the car gets damaged, is that particularly if you're just a sole trader as well, they can pursue you yes. and you lose your house, your, you know, and all the other sort of things that you value. So I've, I've I can tap into experience now of pupils and things that I come to mind for me with this question is I've had people that come in here that they've got, they said to me, all their customers are happy and it might be their mobile valeting with a, a bit of detail in it, you know, because we've, there's a difference, it's a big subject of where there's a blur <laughs> for another day. Oh, 28th but, video. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they, they might be just doing some sort of detail and they come here to learn a lot more and, and they actually go bright red, you can see them get embarrassed when I do a reveal about a certain product they thought was a cleanser is actually completely masking all their, yeah. this, I'm not gonna say bad work, but they didn't understand that hiding all their flaws, it's mm. flattering their work. I didn't demo it, you get this drain look, a redness and almost the blood drains out of them and I'm like, and because it's happened so many times, I go, I can even go, you're now thinking of all your customers' cars where <laughs> you've seen it three weeks later and gone, no, that's not me, and they're like, you're right. And then they get remorse and they actually get upset and they're like, I can't believe I've been doing this. So we you didn't know. Yeah. So that's the unregulated part. And I'm going, look, you're not actually damaging the car, but what you're doing to the car now, the more you know, the harder it gets. I'm mm -hmm. teaching it. They're like, it becomes harder for people with a lot of empathy because I find most detailers are very caring. We have got our odd ways and eccentric, but I think mm -hmm. we do something because it's passion. Yeah, it's artistic, it's artisan that they actually feel really bad. And then, the and same with the person, would, I remember him saying, okay, I said, don't be bad about this. You can now realize you've learned by your mistakes, I'm helping you, let's up your game, let's give this, and you can alter your services, you're gonna to have to adjust your price menu accordingly, because yeah. that's why you've come here, essentially, you wanna get better. And then the next thing was like, but how am I gonna to say to all of my customers that are entirely happy with my work, it was not very good? I went, it's the way you word it. You, yeah. you just look, I've been on a course, I've learned these new skills. Now, what surprised me is how, when you're in it every day, you don't realize what you've actually learned. Yeah. It becomes just normal. And then when you get people that are in this trade but only a year, two years into it, some of the questions they're asking me, and, and now I'm gonna digress, I remember a very good friend, you would know this guy very well, that's been in this industry for like 25 years, mm -hmm. 
and he probably will watch this video, but he's such a good guy, he'll be fine with it. <laughs> he on a training course here, and he's actually worked for me for six weeks and many, many years ago, and then he was on a course here recently, even though he's been here for 25 years. He, yeah. come, he went, when we was putting wax on with an applicator, we was discussing what applicator and what type of wax, and out of the blue, you can imagine what's helped me in teaching, because I've had some weird questions. It was <laughs> circles or straight lines, and I'm thinking, it's not really that relevant in what we're doing at the moment. There's no benefit to either. So I'm like, well, why are you asking this? He went, when I was waxing a client's car in his garage, he was cutting up wood next to it. Okay. The, the sawdust was landing on the car, and I found that straight lines didn't scratch the paint as much as circles. Interesting. You can imagine now I'm going, tell the guy to stop cutting the <laughs> wood up. <laughs> And that's a guy that's been in this industry probably 25 years. Wow. There's actually been demos at places like Waxstop. Mm -hmm. And it's un unreal what he knows about products. And I do yeah. mean the part numbers, the weight of machines. Yeah. He's one of those geeky, they talk about engine number, chassis number type guys. And Perfectly normal. Normal, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there's this stand back a bit, um, the obvious, the common sense, yeah. because you can get really wrapped up into it. So I, I try and advise people, I regularly look at myself from the outside in, try and look at things, stop getting so bogged into it, mm -hmm. common sense. So I've actually now tried to use my database and help people and guide them on a path, if that makes sense, of all my experiences. And as I said, I wish I met myself 12 years ago. Yeah. I probably would have saved myself, and I don't think this is an estima overestimation, I reckon I spent £30,000 on just products. We're talking different machines, which have gone, come and gone yeah. too fast, didn't have a stop start, didn't like them too heavy, got too hot, and the pads and the compounds. Because I looked at social media, and as soon as I saw a post, I had to buy it. Well, I would rather go to an organisation that has an annual fee with a lot of experience behind it, members with experience that are going to be in a community and help, then spend £30,000 in five years of me experimenting to find out it wasn't worth it or it's not for me. It's when someone just thinks they can do it on their own is where I have a concern, even though I did that. Yeah. But I'm being totally honest that... It's the long way around, but yeah. then you were kind of a pioneer of it. But Because there was no facility. Yeah. There was no facility to go, and no one was teaching. Mm -hmm. I was literally one of the first people to do teaching, like I was, and it was only through people asking me constantly to do it, and I was like, I didn't even know if I was going to be any good at teaching. So I started something because there was no one doing it, and mm. there wasn't anything online. You know? Yeah. And what there is, again, it's the same situation now, there's tons online, but the amount of misinformation, or information yes. that is very specific to a particular circumstance and people... That's the right thing. What generally. works on one particular scenario might actually totally not work on another. Exactly. But when you watch... And let's call it YouTube. When you watch YouTube, it must be real. It must be correct. I watched the other day about taking a Fiesta rear light out of my stepson's yeah. car and it showed how to do it and it wouldn't come out and I'm pulling, I'm close to breaking it and it's had like 100,000 views and it just shows two screws pull it. So I'm like, so let's <laughs> do just the third screw. The what? Yeah. Scroll down, next one. What? And that is, is you've got to be critical and something that's interesting is that from a um, so from a, an academic point of view, if you're looking at facts and, and, and learning in science or, or arts or anything, it's about verifying your information and cross-referencing. So there is lots of good information on YouTube and on other, other video but platforms. But we won't know Google. when it is good or not if you don't know this trade yeah. or any trade. And indeed, but, but also is, is, is looking wide. So look at formal training because that yes. really helps. But don't presume that just because you've done two days formal training, you're suddenly Kelly Harris. At the same time, we've got people who have done 20 years in the trade, 20 years in mobile car balloting, say, and assume that, that those 20 years spent doing exactly the same thing puts you in Kelly Harris mode. I'm using you as an example, yeah. it's kind of handy. Um, and then uh, equally, just because 10 years ago you were very, very good and up to speed doesn't mean that you're now current. So it's a combination. Most of what I now currently use is not what I was using yeah. 10 years ago. Half of it didn't exist. No, 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 no. no. So it, yeah, so it's changing all the time. Um, so yeah. training, experience, yeah. and don't ever stop trying uh, to learn. I, I, my uh, slightly we've also trained, but my training in the early days was just what, we called it master detail. Not because we think you're going to be a master detailer. It was a way of trying to make people 
understand you come here, you already have done a lot of detailing mm -hmm. because I'm going to find bad habits and flaws and help you. So I, how I said it was, even though I thought she said a bad accent, Michael Schumacher, because it's the person I followed and I love Ferrari. So I used to say to pupils come here, I'm not, you're not coming here to learn how to dip the clutch, put the key in and start the car and how to pull away. Yeah. If you're here for that, Different hopefully course. my yeah. front man and this check and you, you haven't got in the building. Yeah. The people come in here, I don't have to tell them how, how a clutch engages. Yeah. They, want, break. they want left foot braking, yeah. they want heel and yeah. toe. And then I said, I'm going to make you the most efficient round of racetrack and I was the most efficient at detailing with the best possible finishes without crashing. Yeah. So it comes back to the car. And I went, that's why you're here. If I know someone's coming, that was my tailored course. Mm -hmm. We offer obviously are different as well. We do offer, and that's where I can switch to a group day. It's, it's tricky, but I can do it. You tone down and you're almost teaching the person where the on button is. Yeah. Which is a very difficult thing for me to do when you've only done it a certain way and very structured. So then you have to have the ability to try and pretend you know nothing and think what they would think. Well, it's like, a, well, continuing your analogy, it's like being a race instructor and then on the weekends having to moonlight as a driving instructor. Yeah. For some gormless taxi driver. Yeah. yeah. Taxi driving or something. Yeah. Something yeah. really. So yeah, yeah that's, uh, so there is a different levels of training and they are approachable in different forms. You, I wouldn't want loads and loads of people to come to me for basic about how to wash a car, mm. but they might go to PVD, mm. wouldn't they, for in the community and look at classrooms and stuff. and Yeah, to build up that basic baseline. Yeah. So we've got That's that it. assessment, which is a, a theory assessment and a practical assessment, and it's the baseline. And a lot of it is the business side, like health and safety. So we found so many professionals using really quite nasty chemicals with no PPE whatsoever. I was going to say health and safety when we're balancing on blocks of wood on some seats. It's a bit risky, yeah, we're in a virus situation. <laughs> but it's fine, we've decided we've shared each other's diseases already. That was a fun morning. Go on. I said no tongues, he didn't listen. <laughs> but um, the, and the flip side is, is getting that foundation yeah. in upon which you can then build. And again, just like yourself, is that we don't say, come in and do that test, tell you the best in the world. No. It's not. All it's looking at is... You've passed your driving test, exactly. now you learn to drive. Precisely. It's that. all it is. It's, but at least you've had, when you take your driving lessons, there's some guidelines and some rules, and, and it helps you. It's the journey started correct at the beginning, doesn't it? And it, it prevents that accident. If you went out, if you, if before you did your driving lessons and driving tests, if you're just allowed to go out and have a go, yeah. you know, I'll pop down the M25, what's that pedal do? <laughs> then it's going to go wrong. Yes. And this is exactly the problem yes. we've got in the industry. We've got people coming in with no idea, not necessarily no idea on washing a car necessarily, but no idea on a particular aspect of it or an understanding of it. And it's going to result in an accident. Well, I've never ever had a pupil in this building that hasn't learned loads and some of these pupils have been in here for 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. That's what we've been doing for 20, 30 years and, and that's shocked me, surprised me, which is why I'm now really trying to help the industry because I'm surprised how large the industry is. Mm -hmm. It's a multi-billion pound worth business globally, globally yeah. yeah. And, and it's boomed. Mm -hmm. We've all seen that boom when, you know, as I said earlier, public now know what the word detailing means. And well, it is. I think there's going to be another. I, I think I'm looking at the, the, the kind of the cyclical nature. You'll have a better idea of that than me, having been in it longer. But I think that there's the 2009 recession led to a number of people getting into the trade. Yes. Then the improvement in the economy led to more people having liquid capital and they yes. spent on it. Yeah. And now we've just had the COVID thing. We're in recession again. Are yeah. we going to go through exactly so the same situation? So when I started, it was a that time, 2008. Yeah. So this is very relevant to now, I think. Yes. Because it's, it's a very, without a disease being, it's a very similar financial thing. This possibly may be worse. And we're in that lag period where yeah. in 2008, the likes of you and me weren't affected. No. It was 2010 when it came down. So I just years. started a business which I've, you know, zero followers, zero likes. I've got nothing but a few clients that might want detailing because I'm a mechanic. You just sat there crying in the corner of the internet. Literally yeah. borrowing money, hand over fist, selling my home, to pay off debts, go into a rented accommodation. So I sold everything into what I wanted to do. And I've put in a lot of money. You know, yeah. a lot of people think this is very easy, but it's very, very easy compared to back then. And obviously the size of my building. But so I invested lots right when the crash happened um, and then had to build a business up from scratch. Now, you've got two ways of looking at a recession. And again, it's not me being clever, a client with an Audi A4 event that Seems like an arrogant, almost got used to the brand new cars and the Ferraris coming yeah. in straight away. And then he turned up, wouldn't spend 
actually more money on that car than all these other expensive cars. And it was a, he wanted like everything done he could possibly do. And some of it at the time I didn't even offer. And when he picked his car up, he was so excited. And I've had many man hugs, I've had mm -hmm. men cry and tremble with excitement and all, or everything, and presence. I mean, that's what you're in it for, really, isn't it? It's of the man course, I like man hugs, yeah, man hugs and things. <laughs> and, and he turned around and went, and I, again, I remember, he went, you're going to do very well. So what's that? He went, this recession, I would normally change my company car. That's my company car. Mm -hmm. My little small business I've got every three years. Because of this recession we've gone through, I physically can't afford to. Mm -hmm. Actually, the car's been ultra reliable. I know the car inside out. I've had it from brand new. You've just made my car new again. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. So I actually had, a, I'd say, a, this is tricky because there wasn't many people detailing. I did get quite high exposure on a social media platform where mm -hmm. I got a lot of work from. Again, it was all just top. I didn't know it's going to happen. It's just trying. Yeah, it was the my mum's net, wasn't it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I had a three month waiting list by that, straight away. And, yeah. and I ended up having a three month reserve waiting list because I found over three months people wouldn't then drop out. Yeah. yeah. So I was technically a genuine six month waiting list. And as quick as I could employ people, it didn't get rid of the waiting list. It always was three months. Mm -hmm. I couldn't cope with demand. And that's been growth until last year. And it's not Brexit, sorry, not COVID. I noticed the Brexit, I think, but bear in mind my clients are normally cars of between 50 to half a million pounds. Mm -hmm. So them type of clients owned a collection of cars. So it's going to hit people in a different way. It was suddenly like, I remember saying to my friend, is the phone, why is the phone, is it unplugged? Why is the phone yeah. not ringing? Well, I don't know. And 2019, we essentially did 25 cars less than the year before which relates into exactly the loss, you know, yeah. the reduction in money. And everyone I spoke to, all the clients, and we reached out to them, and they went, um, I'm not lost my job. It's that uncertainty. So with that, last year was not great. And then, of mm -hmm. course, COVID's come along. But I look at it another way that people are keeping their cars now. That was, Again, you can look at it another way. They're going to keep their cars again, and they want their cars new again. So the, the clientele might change, but it doesn't mean you get, you just how you market yourself. Exactly, you've got to adapt to yeah. the changing market. And now people are, so there's a, a very buoyant supercar going on at the moment where everyone's selling the cars because everyone's fear that they're all going to tumble in price. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like 1990 all over again. So that, and that's actually happening. I've seen, because I know lots of people out, I've got supercar dealers that are friends of mine that's what mm -hmm. messaged me saying, you know, do you want to buy a car? Why is that? He went, well, this has just lost half its price in one year. Um, so there's a very buoyant car at the moment market for the high end, I don't think it's going to affect your people who drive your Subaru. No. It's not. No, it won't. It's not. It's not going to. So it, if you're in that high end and you're going, oh my God, my clients are gone, it's not hard to just reach out to a different clientele, is it? If you're in a clientele of the normal family cars, probably not going to affect you much. Mm. And yes, the, the COVID does actually obviously mean that lots of people are very reluctant to come here, but we've deliberately stalled opening, even though people have gone, I want to have my car done. Mm -hmm. um, so we've delayed that opening. Um, Jay's just said to me, I'm sure he just when you walked outside for fresh air, I think he said it's October now, September, October, we're fully booked. Um, so it, it, it's, it's an offset. Yeah. So this is a, it's just it's a very strange industry <laughs> because it is following trends, but I think because we can do a 50 pound car and a 500,000 and a million pound car and you can improve all of those cars you have a very broad spectrum you've got to remain flexible to the to the market there and you've also got to keep an eye on macroeconomic factors i mean it's all very well saying well how does this affect me well it really does it was like the bbc went through a campaign to get people into politics then that was pre-brexit i bet they felt glad about doing that and um, it was very much look these big macroeconomic factors will affect you running a, a, a small car care business in rotherham but you know the shops I've spoken to, online shops, while in, in lockdown, they've obviously functioned with no visitors at all, it's just yeah. online. But they've told me they've had the best, best two yeah. months ever. So that's a tricky one, because me as a detailer, I'm, I'm doing it at home. Yes. yes. <laughs> so if we look at this trade overall, there's, there's always a winner and a loser, isn't it? Always going to be. Well, now, for example, I would, I would do a, a ceramic coating repair service for all those ones that have been applied at home badly, yeah. and then yeah. we're coming in <laughs> wet sanding. We must carry on, because otherwise yeah. we will natter forever and all the batteries will run out and it'll be the end of the world. Um, so what I want to do is wrap up at this point. 
and we're going to do another video very shortly, uh, which is going to be all about your most recent development. Yes, exciting news yes, yes. has come up, which is I know just talking. Um, you can tell the amount of excitement and sort yes, of yes. engagement in it. There's so. also some um, nerves, mm -hmm. probably because it's a new role. It's a very important. Um, I'm not working for myself anymore, if that makes sense. So I'm responsible for myself and I have no one to answer to. So yeah, it's a very it's a big serious, shift. it's a serious role that it takes a yeah, big shift. Yeah, correct. Interesting. Well, anyway, catch up with us soon to see that.